So the number of questions I've received about insurance in Sonoma County lately has skyrocketed. People are worried, and for good reason. I mean, they're asking, can I insure my home? Or what's the price tag going to look like? And is the situation only going to get worse? Insurance has always been a tricky subject, but it's become even more difficult to navigate as companies keep the criteria they use for insuring a pop property as a tightly guarded secret. So I'm David Hargreaves, a top realtor in Sonoma County and one half of the Brewington Hargreaves team. In today's video, I'm going to take you through the backstory of this insurance crisis, the events that brought us here, and most importantly, what can you do to ensure your home is protected both now and in the future? I mean, the main reason insurance has become a problem for Californians and those in Sonoma County is an increase in wildfires we've seen in recent years. Here in Sonoma County, the increasing threat of wildfire has turned the insurance market upside down. Homes that once had no trouble securing coverage are now either seeing sky-high premiums or being left uninsured altogether. So this past month, we had the Park Fire near Chico, which became the fourth largest wildfire in California's history, scorching nearly 400 acres and destroying hundreds of structures. Since then, homeowners and home buyers have been wondering how this will impact the insurance market, especially now that the top 20 most destructive wildfires in California's history have mostly occurred in the last decade. So what's the role of insurance companies in all this? Well, insurance companies are facing enormous pressure due to the increasing risks associated with wildfires and also other natural disasters. To mitigate these risks, many companies have started to pull out of the market entirely, limit the number of policies they issue, or raise premiums to levels that are simply unaffordable for many homeowners. And this has left countless people in Sonoma County and across California struggling to find coverage. Another challenge is the lack of transparency from insurance companies. I mean, this secrecy around the criteria for providing coverage makes it difficult for homeowners and buyers to know if their property will be insurable until it's too late. So what about Fairplan? I'm sure you've heard of Fairplan. But what exactly is Fairplan and what does it mean for homeowners? Well, the Fairplan is a state-backed insurance program designed to step in when homeowners can't find coverage through the standard market. The Fair Plan is funded by private insurers operating in California and offers coverage for you know, fire and other items I explained. But Fair Plan, it does cause a problem for insurers because if there is a major fire event and the Fair Plan funds to pay out are depleted, then Fair Plan can assess insurance companies operating in the market to bridge the financial gap. As things currently stand, these companies have no way to recoup those costs. This led to the biggest companies, including State Farm, pulling out of the market to avoid paying their share from the bailout of the fair plan in the event of a major fire. But State Farm wasn't the only company that pulled out. Seven of California's 12 largest property insurers limited their coverage or pulled out the market entirely, which led to more homeowners needing to use the fair plan. So it's no great surprise that the number of fair plan policy homeowners has doubled since 2018 with 1,000 people per day seeking coverage. Just to put this in context, if there was a wildfire as damaging as the campfire, then the program would likely face $6 billion in claims and only has $2.5 billion in reinsurance. The assessments that this would impose on the companies operating in California would be something like $3.3 billion. And that's why companies are pulling out. They just don't want to be the ones left to have to close the financial gap in the event of a big fire. So what can homeowners and home buyers do in the current market? Well, before we dive into that, if you like this video, please hit like and also subscribe if you're thinking about buying a property in Sonoma County. As the number one team in the area, we've helped hundreds of families successfully relocate and buy vacation homes here. So please be sure to hit subscribe so that you never miss an update. So now we've talked about the problem with insurance, but what can homeowners and buyers do about it? Well, while California still has some good insurance companies here, if you're not able to get insurance from one of these providers, then Fairplan does continue to be the best option. So now let's talk about the insurability of homes. I mean, I often get asked, how do you know if a home is insurable? Well, the short answer is you don't. Insurability can be a tricky thing to determine, and here's why. First, each insurance company has got its own set of rules and criteria for determining whether a property is insurable. And these rules vary widely, even between 
different underwriters within the same company. This means that a home that one company considers insurable might be rejected by another company. I mean, it's frustrating, but it's the reality of the current insurance market. However, there are some general guidelines that can help you assess a property's insurability. While these aren't foolproof, they can give you a better sense of what to expect when you start shopping for a home and ultimately having to shop for home insurance. I mean, based on my experience, these are some broad rules of thumb to help you out. If a property is within a city limits, it'll generally stand a better chance of being insured with a regular policy without the need for a fair plan. If we take two rural homes, one on a single lane road at the top of a ridge and one on the valley floor surrounded by vines, then the one down on the valley floor is much likely to be accepted. Insurance companies know that getting fire trucks and emergency vehicles to rural areas with one lane roads is difficult, and so that's something that they will consider when writing their policies. If there are two homes in very similar settings when it comes to proximity, to amenities, and also topography of the land, it's more li likely a home out in West County in, say, Occidental, is gonna be more insurable than one in, say, Northeast Santa Rosa. As a general rule of thumb, fire risk is higher on the east side of the county compared to the west as you get closer to the ocean. But what about the costs of policies? Well, now you may wonder how much does a policy cost and knowing these sorts of guidelines. And this is actually hard to predict because I've seen policy costs that surprise me on, on both ends of the scale, like very cheap and also insanely expensive. For example, I had a client who purchased a home in Guerneville, which I thought would be a 10 on a scale of zero to 10 on how expensive a home would be to insure. I mean, the home was on a single lane road through trees and sat on top of a ridge looking out over a forest literally as far as the eye could see. And then it happened. The home wasn't eligible for regular insurance, but the annual fair plan premium was estimated to be four and a half thousand dollars to cover fire, wind, and then there's a companion policy of twelve hundred dollars per year. So the total insurance for this three bedroom, twenty four hundred square foot home would be around $5,700 per year, which to me, I thought was amazingly cheap considering its location and the type of home it was. One thing that's been happening a lot in California, not just Sonoma County, is getting dropped by your existing insurance company. According to the Department for Insurance, in 2021, around 13% of policyholders were being dropped. And I'm sure that number's gone up significantly if new figures were available for 22 and 23. I mean, this is definitely one of the biggest challenges the homeowner faces. If you do get a letter saying you're going to be dropped, it's important to know that by law, you must be given a 75 day notice to be renewed and that they must give you a detailed explanation of why they made that decision. And at the same time, give you a chance to do something about it if that is possible. Another important thing to know is that every homeowner does have a responsibility to reasonably protect their home to some extent. I mean, this is called home hardening when it comes to fire. So not doing so can be both negligent and put neighbors at risk. I mean, Cal Fire has got numerous recommendations on how to harden your home and how to create defensible space to mitigate the risks of wildfire. Key home hardening steps include using class A fire rated roofing materials, creating a five foot ember resistant zone around the home, installing ember resistant vents, ensuring six inches of non-combustible material at the bottom of exterior walls, and also doing things like enclosing the eaves. These are all sort of common sense measures, but they make a difference. They also recommend creating a defensible space around the home, like clearing vegetation, trimming trees, and just generally maintaining a vegetation-free zone around structures. So with all this in mind, what are the steps you should take as part of purchasing a home in Sonoma County or any other fire related risk area. So if you're thinking about making an offer on a home, the first thing you should do is investigate its insurability. I mean, the good thing is that purchase agreements have been recently revised to now include the ability to put in a specific insurance contingency, meaning that if you aren't able to complete the purchase by getting an acceptable insurance quote, then you can break the contract without penalty. Another thing to note is that sellers in very high fire risk areas do have an obligation under AB38 and Cal Fire to provide some level of compliance with defensible space requirements before the home is sold. So what's next for home buyers and homeowners? Will insurance in California get any easier? Well, the good news is that there are reforms on the way that will make it easier to get home insurance without resorting to Fairplan. 
So before we talk about how the system will change in an, in an attempt to break out of this cycle that increases the risk of financial collapse, let's just recap how we got here in the first place. All California insurers, including Fairplan, are restricted by regulations imposed in 1988 to control premiums, putting strict limits on the ability of insurers to increase premiums. For example, insurers aren't allowed to include the cost of reinsurance in calculating their premiums, which is clearly a significant expense. They also require that insurers set premiums based on historic claims data over the past 20 years, rather than using some of the more complex and advanced forward-looking models that take into account the changes in building materials to forecast damage from future wildfires, storms and flooding. And so there's a lot of new technology that's now available to insurers to help them manage their risk better. But as things currently stand, they're not allowed to use any of this data in the setting of their premiums. One of the new things that will change when the Commission relaxes some of these previous restrictions is that insurers will be required to write 85% of their policies in high-risk areas, which is going to make a huge difference. Once these changes go into effect, expected to be at the end of this year, then all states and State Farm will likely come back into the California market. But we don't know how much these policies will cost under the new rules that insurers now will have for setting premiums. So on the one hand, it may be easier to get insurance and not have to rely on a fair plan. But on the other hand, we just don't know how much those policies are going to cost. So the other thing worth noting is that once they do re-enter the market, these insurers will have a list of all the Firewise communities in California, making these the first homes to come off the fair plan and get insured by these companies that are coming back into the market. These Firewise communities are communities that have gone through a ton of extra hoops to minimise the risk of fire and get the Firewise certification. Currently, if the Fair Plan's funds are depleted due to a massive event like a wildfire, it can place an assessment on insurance companies to bridge the financial gap. But there are no mechanisms to enable the insurance companies to then recoup those costs. So moving forward, if Fairplan levies up to $1 billion in assessments on insurers within a calendar year, they can request approval from the insurance commissioner to place temporary fees on their policyholders, recouping up to 50% of their assessment. If the assessment exceeds $1 billion, insurers can then ask to recoup 100% of that difference. In other words, the good news is that insurers will come back into the market, but the bad news is that policyholders may just find that costs go up. I mean, the other change that is being made as part of these reforms requires the fair plan to enhance its reporting and the provision of metrics to the public, providing more transparency on the overall state of the market. So regardless of all this, if you own a home or are buying or selling a home, you have a responsibility to both yourself and to your neighbours to harden your home and to do your bit for the community. So what are your main thoughts about all of this and these insurance reforms that are coming down the line? Well, let me know in your comments and let me know what you think. If you made it to this point in the video, there's a good chance that you're thinking about either buying your next home, investing in this area, buying a second home or selling your current home in Sonoma County. We'd love to be your real estate resource of choice. Just email me at david at Brewington Hardwoods to get started. I mean, our team's the number one team in Sonoma County, helping over 70 families last year with nearly $80 million bought and sold. So we're here to help you whether you want a second home or a vacation rental, or if you need inside information and get access to new construction projects in the county, or just updates on homes that are coming on the market, and way more besides. And hey, before you go, if you like this video, you'll love my video about everything you need to know before deciding to move to Sonoma County. There, I'll break down the different areas, what it's like living there, and way more besides, so make sure to check it out. See you in the next video.